My next guest takes on Zach Shaw coming up here at KOP 54 on March 17th. Kenneth Cross joins me here on the program for the very first time. Kenneth, what's going on? Uh, I just got done training, getting that work in. Good stuff. Well, I appreciate you uh, having me as part of your after training regimen. And uh, I, first thing I noticed when I checked you out was your nickname is The Boss. Are you a Bruce Springsteen fan? Are you a Tony Danza fan? Where'd you get that cool nickname? What's, what's the story uh, on that? Uh, well, obviously it rhymes with Cross. So, I mean, I yeah. figured that it'd give it a cool little punchline. But actually, my trainer, Scooter Hostin, back in Tennessee, was like the first guy to actually take me on and believe in me and push me to my limit. And he was. He's like, you know what? You're Cross the boss, man. He's like, you're the boss. So I was like, you know what? I like that. And I was still, I was actually, uh, my first nickname was Playboy. And I had a girlfriend at the time who didn't like that. <laughs> so she, she scrapped that. And I was just Kenneth Cross for a while. And then I met that fine gentleman and he gave me the boss. So there it is. Well, it fits. I definitely dig it. And I definitely like that story. Um, how did you get involved in combat sports? Oh, back from when I was a little kid, you know, I had a big brother who was always beating me up and we were wrestlers. We watched UFC, and all of a sudden, we started having the whole school come to our backyard, and we were having we called it UFC fights. You know, like uh, we we'd get two guys in the middle of the hallway. They'd be like, "Hey, I want to fight him. Okay, does he want to fight you? Okay, come on back." And so it's like we were hosting it. Me and my brother would fight. He was like the only one that would fight me, and he was bigger than me, stronger. He'd beat me up, you know. But I'd land a couple punches, and then it just went on to wrestling, and we were we were doing really good at wrestling. And then after you know after high school was over, I could have went and competed in college wrestling, but it just you know that wasn't my stepping stone. So this is the other avenue I had to go and uh, compete at a pro- professional level. And so far, it's working out for, for me. Uh, MMA it's growing, you know, and I'm growing with it. So I love it. Who were uh, some of your favorite fighters growing up? Oh, GSP. He was he was my number nice. one. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Anderson Silva was right up there with them. You know, I always wanted to see that super fight happen. That was always something that, you know, would have been crazy. But definitely GSP and Anderson Silva were the two guys I looked up to. Just the way that they would they would always win, you know, no matter what. They would go out there if it was a brutal brawl or if it was a walking backward, you know, slap and you knock someone out. It was just fun to watch. And, you know, it inspired me. And I looked up to those guys. So, yeah. Yeah, and hopefully that's the next fight for George. I, I'd like to see him fight Anderson. I think that's yeah. the fight you do because it doesn't mess sweet. up any of the divisions, right? Because, you know, right. they, they want him to fight Bisping, but then, you know, there's so many contenders at 85. I'd rather see him fight Anderson personally. But Yeah, yeah, that would be sweet. And a, a good fight for him to come back in and test his will against another guy that was, you know, peaking when he was peaking. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, what do you do, bes- what do, you do uh, besides uh, mixed martial arts for work? Uh, what pays the bills for you? Uh, I, I live with my father, you know, he's a big help for me and he does a lot of carpentry, a lot of pool building, a lot of whole miscellaneous, he, anything that you want done for your house, you know, your landscaping, anything he can do it. And I've been, me and my brother, we worked with him since we were, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. So I just been taking on the load of carpentry here and there. And I've done a whole bunch of other stuff like iron working and trim carpentry, a bunch of stuff like that. But just hopping around, I really just want to get full time in the gym and just dedicate my life to being the best fighter there is. Good for you, man. I think that's the way you got to do it. If you want to go all in on this, you got to go all in, right? So you got to, you know, you got to, you got to do what it takes to get to the next level. So I can, I can appreciate that, and uh, glad to see that's working out for you. Um, let's talk about your career, though. Here, three and zero in your career went three and zero last year. All finishes. Could you have had a better start to your career? I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, no. It's looking back on it, you know, it's it, it hypes me up because as I think of myself, I am so green in the sport. I am so brand new. I'm like a freshman in high school. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of people. I finally had my first gym. But, yeah, you know, I've had first first round finishes. I've been the underdog every single fight. I mean, for how big of the crowd people say that I bring, I'm still the underdog every single time. And I'm 22 years old, and it's just it's, – it's coming up, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm liking the way the future looks. And what does it mean to compete for uh, KOP? I mean, an organization that's really pushing sort of the next generation here. Uh, Matt's doing a phenomenal job with the fighters. Must mean a lot to be on this card. When I first found KOP, I actually had one fight before I got with them, and I was 8-0 as amateur, 3-0 as pro, so I had one fight before them, and I actually had my third fight that nobody ever seen because it wasn't filmed, but for my second fight, we fought at a, a racetrack, which I was like, dang, this is super cool. I didn't even have time to sign my papers and get my hands taped because I was the first exhibition match. They didn't even put me on the card. I had to like fight my way to even get on this thing, and I ended up going three rounds. Uh, Nick Diaz came. I was After my fight, I won after a three-round fight. I was puking in the tents for like 20 minutes all over my feet, all over all the fighters. They're like, oh, I'm like, this is my tent now. Sorry. But so, yeah, I mean, KOP, Matt and uh, Josh, they've been like my big brothers. They've helped me through everything, kind of like a manager. You know, he's, he's always been there for me. And as I started fighting for him, like they, no one really knew me at first. I was just a kid wearing a blue backpack. 
But now as I keep winning, they keep winning, you know, in the business. They keep going up and up and up. And now, like, on Facebook, we are better than Bellator. Like, we're right under USC. Like, that blew my mind. I, I almost didn't vote because I didn't even think we had a chance. But obviously, I voted, and we destroyed everybody. So, I mean, KOP is just, I don't know. I'm I'm peaking, like, when they're we're both going at the same time. Like, it's just amazing to be with them. You know, and it's great people, great worth ethic. Uh, Matt Friendo, you know, he's just got a mind of a, a worker bee, man. He's ready to get everything done he's like having panic attacks at the fight because nothing's ever perfect even when it's perfect for him you know so it's beautiful it's beautiful and, and I was going to say, one thing i got to commend, uh, you know, Matt for is the matchmaking here. This is a great fight. Uh, someone's O has got to go. You're facing another 3 right. fighter in Zach Shaw. Um, I love these type of fights because it's one of those crossroad fights. The guy who wins is going to go into greatness. The guy who loses, you know, a little step back, but it's still, uh, you know, a very uh, tough test for both of you guys. How do you, fe- how do you feel like you match up against him? Uh, I feel like I match up. We're kind of like the same people. I feel like he's a wrestler. He's got some striking. You know, he's strong. Uh, he's a little bit shorter than I am. It's going to be the first guy that I fight that's a little bit uh, shorter than I am. So that's awesome. Uh, they say he's a great wrestler. I think I'm a great wrestler. See him coming at me. I'm going to stuff him. I'm going to keep it standing. I'm going to blow him up on the feet. I'm just, I'm too fast. I'm too explosive. And as new as I am, I feel like I have the arena, like in that cage. I know exactly where I'm at. I'll jump off the cage and I'll hit you with a left. You know, I'll finish up with a little nut tickle and then take you down. It's I, I know what I'm doing. And even as new as I am, He's a great fighter. He's a beast. Credit to him. But I'm just better, and I'm going to take him out. I, there's not a lot of uh, undefeated uh, lightweights in Michigan right now, so I've heard. I haven't really looked it up, but Matt told me. So I'm looking to be the only undefeated lightweight in Michigan. Love it. Uh, who are some of the people helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, one of the one of the main guys is Josh Zimmer. You know, he he's like the, the godfather, so they say, of uh, Triumph MMA. Brandon Emmons, he's got he's amazing on his feet, man. He's just got these quick snake-like python jabs and crosses and head movement. So he's teaching me a lot, a lot, a lot on the feet. And then, therefore, he's fighting a wrestler so that I can help him with his wrestling. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, those are the two main guys right there. I, I, I mix in a little bit with some other guys, but I, I, may, I mainly just stay here at Triumph. And we got, like, Todd Holstead, who He's fighting on this card as well. Uh, Brandon's also fighting on this card as well. Adrian Lyons, I think that's his last name. He's helped me a little bit. He's a good wrestler, and we're helping each other stand up. He's fighting on this card as well. We got like four or five guys from Triumph. Yeah, that's awesome. It's always nice having guys also getting ready. You know, morale's high at the gym. You guys are always kind of, you know, getting fired up at the same time. Definitely makes a difference for sure. Yeah, it, my last fight was the first time I actually had a corner with, like, my brothers. You know, like, I feel like these guys are my brothers. This is the first time I've had that. Normally, it's, it's, normally it's my actual brother. And my my uh, manager, Liam, and I mean, it could be my, my dad in there, you know, it's just my buddies and people that have, or my, my buddy Chase Hughesman, people that have wrestled with me. Now I got guys that are in here, you know, working with me, cutting with me, and knowing what to do, what to tell me, helping me out. And it really did, it hyped me up, man. I walked in there, that was the first time that, like, I was giving hugs before the fight, and I was just like, man, you smell good. Man, I like, thanks for being here, slap on the ass, you know, like, it, it did, it hyped me up. And now I have all these dudes on the same card with me. So I can't imagine how fun this is going to be, but it is going to be fun. March 17th, what's your prediction? How do you see this fight ending? It'll be a first-round finish. Uh, I want a knockout, man. The last guy I fought, Rice Brink, I hit him with a flying knee and then a straight left. His eyes rolled in the back of his head. Once he hits the canvas, boom, he came back. And I was like, no! I was like, <laughs> everybody wanted that one-hit KO, and I was like, I actually got it. But then I did it. He came back alive. So with Shaw, I mean, if I can keep it standing, that's what I want to do. I don't. I've, I finished... I would have finished all three of these dudes with a rear naked after just, you know, mutilating them. But I'm tired of just, you know, going to the easy go-to, just beat you up and then take your back and ride you because no one can get me off, man. I'm just going to – I am I throw on the harness and I just go for eight seconds and all of a sudden I'm a professional bull rider and then I tap you out. You know, I'm, I, I want to knock you out. I want to kick you in the head. I want to do some tornado kicks. You know, I want to show off what I've been learning and my accuracy looking for the chin. Excellent. Uh, before I let you go here, what do you like doing on your downtime? Are you a sports guy? Are you a Netflix guy? Are you a video games guy? What What would I find you doing when you're not in the gym? All, All three? three of those. Uh, yeah, no, I, I love going out and playing sports, man. I just I wish I had more friends that wanted to. I'm now getting into a gym with guys that do. Uh, PS4, man, I'm a Sony guy all the way through and through. Uh, Netflix all day. I actually just started watching One Tree Hill, which is pretty lame. But no, I'm hey, listen, hey, listen. It. Fully admit, I watched that in university, man. <laughs> so you're speaking my because you know what? I like how the guy played basketball. I thought that was what kind but, of drew me in. Yeah, and so. uh, Gavin DeGraw, bro, the walkout song every time. Gavin DeGraw yeah. kills it. 
Yeah. I don't want to be anything other than what you got I'm it. In. Right. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. That's one of those shows that uh, I, yeah, back in the day, I watched like every episode. And... I thought it was made in like 1994. It was like 2011. Yeah, I know. It was up there. It's uh, it's not bad. It was like, it, that show was like rivaling the OC at the time, you know? like it was... I watched that too when I was like eight. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. See, I'm I'm a little bit older than you, so that's uh, you know that's <laughs> that, 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 that's what that's the hilarious. difference is. But but uh, no, that's good, man. Nice to get your mind off that. And we're certainly looking forward to this fight, KOP 54, March 17th. If you live in the area, go support some local MMA. Uh, Kenneth, can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program. Where can people find you on social media? If you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Cross the Boss MMA. I do believe uh, Kenneth Cross or Kenneth Mitchell Cross on Facebook. I do have some shout outs. I want to say thank you very much to uh, Liam Howard for being my manager. He's always been there for me doing all the nitty gritty stuff that I don't want to do. Matt Frendo, I mean, God bless you, man. You're amazing. You and your afros helped me through everything. Josh Medley, man, you've been there. You, you backed me through it all. You, you know I'm a star and I'm here to fight for you guys, which I respect all that. You guys treat me well. Uh, I want to say thank you to my sponsors at Klusterman Sports Tab. They've been helping me greatly. They're right there in my hometown. If you guys ever want to have a really good uh, uh, pickle, fried pickle, or any drinks, that's what I go down there for. It's amazing. It's good hospitality. Everybody's fun. Uh, Caged Muscle, they've helped me out a little bit back in the day. I don't know now, but, I mean, that's one of my sponsors. Uh, one more, Combat Corner. Just got Combat Corner, dude. They're sweet. I, I mean, 30% off everything. They're sending me shirts, and, I mean, a lot of great stars have already been uh, sponsored by Combat Corner, so it's a privilege to be, you know, on the up and up for them. And I, I, I greatly appreciate everything that everybody's doing for me, my friends, my family, my grandma. You are the love of my life. I love you. Thank you for everything. And my father, you guys all rock. Thank you for your support. 